everybody. This podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the CHOCOBROS. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Bro. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week we're going to start off by interviewing our bubble boy, uh, Cody Snodgrass. <laughs> so you played in LQ this past weekend, and you took what place? Nice. Please insert bubble effects. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us about it. So how are you? How did your rounds go? How did how did you end up at nine? Uh, yeah. Oh. So <laughs> I went to a local qualifier <laughs> in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, this weekend, which was a five-hour drive for me. Uh, and uh, is that to make us feel worse for you about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. for sure. No, that's to try and get LQs in Missouri because we still have none. <laughs> um, but uh yeah so i have literally zero lqs yeah none zero wave one and two yep what's your player base like pretty good actually it's been pretty consistent what's the average population would you say uh i'd say average probably like eight which isn't like a lot but oh that's pretty good yeah um but anyhow uh i decided to play mono ice uh shocker Per, per usual, yeah. <laughs> it, it surprised uh, me. We had last I'd heard we had talked and you were on Wind Water. You decided to go with Wind Water. I knew you had made a lot of changes in the typical Choker Bros fashion, but yeah, uh, yeah. I actually wrote out both deck lists when I got there, and I asked Pat and Kyle to pick one, and Pat said the one on the right, and that was <laughs> ice. The scientific method. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was like, I was like about, I was talking to the judge about to turn it in. I'm like, right or left, guys. He said right, and that was on away, so I went with that. And uh, it wasn't bad. I, went, I don't have anything really terrible to say about the deck, but uh, round one, I went up against Fire Lightning. Um, it was a fairly easy matchup. Um, he kind of had the early aggression at the beginning, um, and then I just froze all his stuff and came back and won <laughs> that game. That's how that goes. Uh, but, but he's a very friendly guy. Uh, he actually talked about we talked about the podcast. He listened, so um, that was cool to talk to him about that. Good to hear. Uh, round two, I went up against Shane Duckworth and his uh, notorious Golbez deck. Uh, <laughs> I kept a hand with Zalera in it, uh, hoping that Golbez would eventually break. Uh, Golbez never broke, and by the time it would have broke, it was too late for me to do anything really. Uh, now, what about Vane? Don't you have two copies of Vane in your deck? Yeah, as soon as he hit the board, it got strong assorted. So, <laughs> and then and then the second one hit damage. So, that was that match. Uh, Wait, so and, did you win uh, or did you lose? Oh no! Lost. Did you hear what oh, just yeah. happened? Oh. I mean, yeah. I heard that, but you said yeah, Golbez never broke. No, yeah, that I, I thought you meant you well, If Golbez never breaks, you also lose. <laughs> yeah, if Golbez never breaks, you lose. But if Golbez breaks, you can Zalera. So, yeah. Mm. Um. But yeah, so I lost that match. Uh, round three, I went up against Mono Earth um, with Veritas. He started with like Noctis. He didn't really play a lot of backups. Um, I managed to Veritas his Gladiolus, and then when Veritas broke, he lost one of his only two backups. So it was kind of just like me surviving the early aggression and mm -hmm. comeback win per usual. Um, after that, I went up against Ramon. Uh, he was on wind water sid 2 actually okay. uh, which is very interesting but he didn't see any backups so oh that's, that's rough oh, for your deck built oh, around yeah <laughs> Jeez. it felt really bad because i opened like four or five backups in my opening hand um so like my first few turns were set up he opened with the turn ones a dane got rid of like my turn two backup but i had like two other turn two backups so and then i think the first backup he ended up drawing was an evoker so it was pretty much it was over Them's the quick. beats yeah it, it felt really bad uh and we talked about it would have been a much better game if he had opened like sid 2 per se or even you know or riku um yeah i won that one so i was 3-1 going into the last round of swiss uh went up against kyle peters uh we both knew each other's list he was on ice earth um kind of like his spin on the brian lou deck uh, the cancer dot deck that he won his local qualifier with. The flan deck. No, no, no. It was like oh. the archangel oh, TT. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. And um, very interesting deck. Um, 
and Kyle got me, I think I got him to six points of damage, um, but usually the Ice Earth matchups against Mono Ice are pretty one-sided. Usually Ice can take the early lead, and then Shantoto happens, and <laughs> that's where the game goes from there. Um, but we both actually, we figured that I would be in the top eight no matter what, means that Shane was my tiebreaker, he was the last undefeated, he was at table one, we were at table two. Um, unfortunately, things did not work out. So you, you lost, lost at table, at table two? two and got bubbled? Yep. What? That makes zero sense. Did you yeah. look at the tiebreakers and stuff to make sure they did the math and all that and they reported the yeah. last one? Yeah, we looked at him before and after. And I think Aaron Wiseman, he like ex- tried to explain it to me, but I didn't really understand it because I don't. Two. I don't really pay. Yeah, it was very. Uh, hmm. They they said that like two of my opponents that I played previously must have won, and two of them must have lost. I don't know how it all added up, but that's bizarre. But your opponents losing, or like the winning and the losing, like that's like, yeah. That just seems yeah. it seems bizarre I... because the last round should be paired according to standings going into that round. Mm-hmm. So like every person that you lost to would have had to lose, and every person you won would have had to lose. Like that's how that's how crazy yeah. I think it would have to happen in order for that to be correct. It's interesting. I actually want to run simulations. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like tempted to get on challenge challenger right now and like run simulations of how often that's even possible in a five round tournament. Yeah, right. it was it was pretty shocking. What, do you know what seed uh, you were going into? Like, were you third or fourth? I mean, that might not matter, but um, at that point, if he was fourth seed and lost, it's it's could really in, hard to say this, but is it possible he was like fifth seed and it got paired accordingly because of the way that the standings? Oh, were? true. You might have, or you faced people who are already in like whatever position you normally face them, so you get paired up or down based on that. So if you got paired up, lost, then that could bring you back down. It still seems so unlikely. Oh yeah, it's very unlikely. It's but yeah, but. Yeah, we were sucks, uh, sucks to suck. Let's though. just yeah. talk more and more about it to make him feel worse. <laughs> oh yeah, no. no, it was a it was a good time though. It was a fun event. It went by super quick compared to like the drive up there. Um, I'm sure the drive home didn't. <laughs> yeah, but mostly the drive up there was me like frantically like messaging everybody on Facebook, and I messaged <laughs> Sam, uh, Nick Schnell, Jordan Dank, Chris Adams, uh, all the Kansas guys because I was debating on deck lists and everything like that. Um, ended up ignoring ninety percent of those. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting to see that Kyle named his deck list a wild Cody Snodgrass appears, right? Because you don't appear anywhere in that top eight list. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cuts cuts deep. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, I think I should have gone with a more discard heavy ice deck. I wanted to try Final Fantasy VI one last time, mm-hmm. um, so gave it one last hurrah. But I think that is done for now, at least. So your opponent that played the Sid too is that the guy who made top eight? Yes. Yep. He says Ramon. Okay. Yep. Oh, cool! I didn't see the name. I was just looking at Sid. What a card! Interesting. Yeah, Sid, what a card! Yeah. Yeah, it's a very link up Fina with Sid. Sweet. Yeah, it's quite a diverse field out there. Um, I expected a lot more Earthwind, and there was, I think, Aaron might have been the only one on Earthwind. I mean, somebody top it, top forward with uh, Final Fantasy VII Dunkin' Donuts Earth Fire deck. <laughs> that's what he called it. It's got a Veritas and Light Cloud. Uh, uh, I didn't realize that there was life. two two copies of the Golvez deck in top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, as soon as I was 1-0, they were both 1-0, and I was like, all right, well, I'll probably have to play Golvez next round. And... <laughs> how's, how's it, how, how does it feel, Zach? I mean... So it feels good because I love seeing it do well, but it feels bad because I don't like the build at all. <laughs> like, I just I would rather be playing other cards. But I mean, if these work, I mean, more power to you, man. Yeah, I, th- I think the deck is definitely like a Swiss, a Swiss, a Swiss, Swiss machine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right there. You go. Ballin'. <laughs> uh, but no, I think in Swiss it's very good. Um, and the well, best is your opponent has no idea what's going on. Say, right? when, yeah, when you face people that have never seen it before, it's such an advantage. Like, we had a local who was playing it, and he—it's the first time I've ever played against him. He's newer, and I guess Sam newer. That was 
Yeah, they were. That was his like first tournament, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> and he goes turn one. Gilgamesh, like, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. Because I'm like, I I know how like the how this works. Yeah, and yeah. and I played Golbez for like the first three opuses, so I know what to expect. Um, but I mean, it just makes a lot of my cards in my deck dead. Like Veritas, you never want to play that on that board. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it makes Alara really good, but Golbez never broke. And by the time it was gonna break, I had to prevent it with Edward, like the Famprit. So, <laughs> Jeez. it was not it was not a good time, but it was a good oh. time at the tournament. So, <laughs> yeah. Outside of that, uh, we had a few more LQs. Um, I don't know if you guys saw all the results, um, but we had Sam Tool qualifying. Yep, I saw that. Uh, Zaim, he qualified. Um, Jordan Joe, Dank. Joe Wojcinski also in Illinois. Yep. Yeah, that was another LQ I was debating about going to, um, mm -hmm. but I had blockers at the Des Moines one, so. Did you play against any of your blockers? Kyle yeah, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one that took the wings, like, hey, you're in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a blocker. <laughs> well, see, you didn't realize when he said blocker, it was blocking you out of the top eight, not blocking right. for you. That's what it was. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't understand that, but. But yeah, um, a lot of good LQs. We the see idea, a lot of familiar too, the faces. idea though, too, though, by the way, if someone's blocking for you, um, they should give you the win there because it puts you in better better seating. And I wonder if Kyle would have made top eight anyway. No, he was eighth. No, he oh, he ended up eighth, so he would have been ninth. No, 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 he ended up at like fifth or sixth. Oh, he's just eighth on FF decks. That's my fault. Yeah. Right, yeah, he, right. He lost the first round of top cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder if he would have made top had he lost to you still, though. We were doing the math on that, and we didn't think he would. Um, but we thought for sure we would both make it if he won. Like, 100%. We well, were reasonably, like, with what you're saying with your matchups and record, that's what it sounds like, too. But Yeah. Especially but, if your loss is undefeated. But your first loss. Right. Now, granted, Shane did lose the final round. Um, so maybe that... Oh, okay. I thought he, I thought he was undefeated. Is what they're saying. Did he was undefeated up until the last round. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know he went undefeated in the last. Um... Yeah, he did undefeated at Omaha and Swiss. Okay, so was there anyone undefeated in this round? No. Okay. He okay. still he All still right. ended up first. Gotcha. That's what I saw. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, he lost to Mono Water in the last round of Swiss. But yeah, all in all, it was a good event. What was the prizing like? Because now I, I heard that prizing has been um, hit or miss based on where you where you are. You know, I know some stores throw in a lot of packs based off entry. I, I heard that there was one in California where they got nothing. It was literally just the promos. Just that, a trophy? That, well, the promos too, which is sweet. But, like, that's not what you do, right? Um, so what was your prizing like, Cody? Uh, to be honest, I didn't really stick around much. Uh... Okay. Mainly because I had the five-hour drive. I know I got four packs. Everybody got four packs, no matter what. And then they, I know they had the trophies. They had the Laswells. They had like the A zero zero three promos. Uh, they had the play mats, which. But you did get packs for entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My and understanding I is I think they were based on sure placement. But... I believe they're based on placement also. Okay. Like I know ninth and down got four packs. And then I don't know about after that. Um, although I will say one thing about the play mats, they are not the greatest looking things. The uh, the black ink is very uh, it's not great. Like like there's brown streaks across the mats. Oh like, really? Almost, almost as if the like the ink like on the printer like ran out of ink basically. Interesting. I'm trying to see. So I pull up um, Jordan selling his mat, and I don't know if it's the lighting, but it does look a little bit brown on the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. That's really um, interesting. Yeah, so you guys have met Patrick Foglio before. Yeah, he had, he's cool as shit. Yeah, he had his mat out and I'm looking at it and I'm like, dude, what did you do to your mat? <laughs> like it looked like <laughs> it looked as if he had left it out in the sun for like a day. That's what this mat looks like. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's very noticeable. It's bad. They're not great looking. Interesting. Looking That's really Jordan's, interesting. Uh, maximize here. Yeah, so yeah, and I'm seeing people sell their mats for like $60. And 
Well, normally yeah. if there's a like, you know, premium mat like that, that's what people would generally agree on. Right. Yeah, but I'm not seeing it. It is. I was pretty disappointed when I saw them. Like, ironically, the local qualifiers um, logo being added on there makes the mat less desirable for me to buy if I don't earn it. You know. Right. It'd be yeah. kind of like buying the world's mat. It's like, well, like it's cool to have a mat. It has but their I don't, name I don't on want it. Not to say Jordan on it. You know. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. Just having that, it, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, I, I like the mats. They're a cool design, but it is interesting that the very first mat I, I just pulled up after hearing what you said also seems to have that big brown streak across it. Mm-hmm. I, don't know if, I don't know if you look at the same thing I saw, Zach. Um, uh, Jordan's uh, mat? Yeah. So now I'm going to pull up Chris Daniels' list, and he has both mats side by side, both for sale. And oh man, is it huge! Like difference. Which uh, oh, who is this? Um, Chris Daniels. Uh, I'm gonna post oh, sure, it right I here. Oh, I'm gonna drag it into the chat. This is a huge. Well, I can. Here, let me. Can uh, you drag it into the Discord? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, that's what I was. Well, that's I was what gonna I'm just gonna put do. it on my screen because I'm recording. <laughs> that works too. But you can do that for the viewers. But there you go, Cody. Yeah. That is. Yeah, that is. I'm just gonna maximize this real quick. Holy cow, that's... And it sucks, because, like, I think the crystals across the middle is, like, a very nice touch. It's interesting that the, uh... I mean, this is a small detail, but the corners are different, too. Like, it's way more rounded on the black one, but, the like, the new one's got, like... Oh, yeah. Edgy. It's, like, nice. It's actually, I like the cut better. It's a little more space. I, I like the cut better than the newer ones. But, yeah, that black is just a whole different color. That's unreal. Yeah, so... That was my one... My one gripe about the price support was seeing that. Although you said, uh, you were mentioning earlier, Cody, you saw that Europe's getting our Nationals one mat or something? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what the event was. I could probably pull it up on the fans page. Uh, but they are they have an event where the play mat included in the prizing is our Nationals World of Final Fantasy mat from year one. Does it say North American Nationals or is it just the art? No, no. No, I think it has, I believe it has whatever the event is over there. Like that title at the bottom. Gotcha. Now does so that... that's on the fans page. Yeah. I don't oh, go so there very often nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it's a dark place. <laughs> yeah. Dark... Uh, I read that Simba meme with like uh, Mufasa and him on the cliff looking out at the thing. It's like that's the dark land. We don't go there or whatever. <laughs> I don't. I don't see the post, but may- maybe it was on the Europe page. The. Oh yeah, it could have been the Europe page, or it might have been shared through the Europe page onto the fans I, page. That, that would make sense. Let's see. Yeah, I see it now. There's a Europe page. Yeah, the playmate. Yeah, it's the Wolf playmate. Interesting. Yeah, it's the. I think it's a London summer. What do you guys think about that? The fact that they're recycling the art. Yeah. Uh, I hope they recycle some of the good Europe art for us. Yeah, that that's a good point. I do like the idea that we could be getting some of those Australian mats. Like it'd be nice to like that would completely cure a lot of my complaints with the qualities of mats we've gotten in comparison to other regions. Is like if they're just gonna cycle them through so that each region has a chance of the art just with a particular event on it, that'd be sweet. Yeah, yeah I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, instead we can stop trading mats too across the, <laughs> across the pond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the local qualifier mats have gone down in quality, obviously. Oh. Hopefully we can get some of those, like the Australian, uh, the leaderboard mat I saw today. It has like Hope and Alexander on it from Final Fantasy XIII. Hmm. Looks a whole lot better than black with brown streaks. Yeah, I like the uh, the Titus mat. That's the one I want the most. I don't even like Titus that much as a character. I just think it's a great mat. Yeah, the also sick. the um, the new Noctis one with the road trip, like them all walking on the road. That'd be sick to see here. That'd be cool like, to have a mat like that for like a team event or something, too. If they ever did one, you could have like the group kind of walk. That would be cool, uh, actually. But no, actually, speaking of mats, Sam, you're going to be going to Toronto this weekend, right? I am. To, to participate and try to win and a I'll mat. I'll be staying with Hopefully a mat. Oh. I'll be staying with a mat. I'm working with teams with a mat, and I'm trying to win a mat. So I'm, and, a, I'm... and a world's invite, of course. <laughs> That's not really my focus, um, but oh, that would be cool. BS, you know. It no, is. Not, it's not at all. Like I want to qualify for nationals. See, it's, uh, that's fo- what you always say. But as soon as you hit top eight, you're like, all right, I'm just I'm thrashing these people. Like, ah, uh, no, 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 no. top, top, once I hit top four, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, hit top four. Yeah. Yeah, I um, 
I'll, I'll plan to win worlds in Kansas, but I don't want to like for for our uh, for this trip. I just want to make nationals so I can secure my spot, not stress over all these LQs coming up. But if you go to nationals, or, or but if you go to worlds, you don't have to worry about nationals. Yeah, and that's true. And I might not if I were to win hypothetically. Hypothetically, if I do win Toronto, I won't go to nationals. That's more than a fact. I will not go to nationals. So. So maybe that's a good thing. Well, it's <laughs> it's money. It's, yeah. it's money. Yeah, it's a whole trip. You know, like I already for worlds and all that. I am already attending all the CCs besides Arizona and Portland. Like, so I'm already trying my best to like go out and support the game. I would love to be able to skip a tournament that if I'm already qualified for worlds. Right. So yeah, but we'll see. I gotta I gotta get there first. Yeah, there's a it's a it's a long road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it could be a short road. It could just be a, oh, a short trip to the north. <laughs> Beyond the wall. No. <laughs> so how many people are uh, going from Tampa area? I know you're um, traveling with quite the crew. but Yeah, it's going to be Jacob, Jen, and um, the, uh, the, the famous Chad. I don't know whether Chad is going to be playing fire or not, but it'll be interesting. And so. is Alejandro also going up there with you guys? He's not going with us. He's doing like a bromance trip with Jonathan Sjorde. Um Okay. I think they're having like a double date thing, which is pretty cool with their wives. Um, oh, okay. But I will see him there, which I'm pretty excited about. I think we fly. We actually don't land until like 10, 15, like PM. So we're going to land, probably test for like an hour with uh, Brian and Oki and then go to sleep. Like I imagine there was it not going to be a late night. Like I'm going to have to bring melatonin because... I'm going to be too, like, going to sleep, like, getting there so late is going to give me so much anxiety over having to play in the morning without any deck choices. Like, basically, I'm going to get there and say, okay, here's what we talked about, guys. And then Brian or Oki is going to make some last-minute change that I would normally make, and I'm just going to fall in line. So, <laughs> are you? Uh, so you all have the archetype picked out, though. Uh, no, we have several archetypes really? picked okay. out. So. <laughs> Still? <laughs> Yeah. So I thought you said uh, this past weekend at Locals that you were pretty much locked on at least a general archetype, but the actual individual card choices were still up in the air. Um, there's a lot of things up in the air, so, okay. yeah. <laughs> May just not play in the event. I mean, no. <laughs> I'm, that. I'm probably playing in the event. Okay. They would have to offer me commentary, which I think they already got covered, and then also a trip. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to be like, yeah, you can have commentary and commentate worlds and i'd be like okay yeah i'll skip it <laughs> i'd also be interesting i'd also be interested if they were if i were to get there and they would say like the judge backed out we can't judge we can't do it would you judge i would say yes uh three zidane promos and we'll have a deal <laughs> i think judge compensation is, is important so i'm not just saying that like oh i would only do it if i got paid like i think judge compensation is important in keeping um, of course I mean, in other words, right. so, there's no motivation to, you know, doing yes. jobs. <laughs> it's kind of how you... So, in other words, I am succeeding uh, succeeding to the point that you said that, yes, it's not 100% sure I play. I, I might not play. Who knows? But it's 99.999. He's playing. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> <He's> playing. <laughs> I'm playing. And if you think I'm playing Water with Monsters, you have no idea. <laughs> Who knows? But you might You're be pretty... right. I'm yeah. definitely bringing it. That's a 100% <laughs> sure I'm bringing it. Well, I, I believe you were quoted for Portland as saying if Oki or Berkeley play Water Earth, they will, they win, will win. They yeah. didn't, and they lost. So, therefore, if you played at this event, you'll win, right? I, I literally think it's the best. Or is that only if you were... <laughs> no, no, I, I really do think that there is a Water Earth deck that is the best deck. But I also I will say that I have not done the preparation that I how hoped how to. many earth or water cards are required in a deck to be considered a water earth deck a a less than ten percent of any other color so like maybe a couple of dark cards is fine no but, but I mean like how many earth do you have to have in a mono water deck to call it earth? oh so I you know I played I played like around with three, a deck if that you're had three three Chantoto, Chantoto and three Cecil, three Cecil is, is that and water? it had three luminous Puma okay. Is that water? Earth? <laughs> I think it also had magic pot. How are we looking? I don't know. <laughs> 12 <laughs> I mean, cards. 
That's like no, 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 we didn't have three magic pots. Holy crap, no. <laughs> oh, no, it had Kefkas, too. So it had one magic pot, two Kefkas. So it did have 12. Yeah, yeah it's a splash. That's a splash, yeah. Well, that's, okay, that's then... a, a four. Of it's almost like water. It had it had Cognazzo. I mean, if they can call it Earth, Wind, and Fire with just three Phoenix, I think we can call that yeah, water. Right. <laughs> that's fair. Do they, do they call that Earth, Wind, and Fire? I think fire? they just want the name, but I disagree. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's just Earth. That's just Earth Wind, right? Yeah, you guys will have to tune in next week to find out if Earth Water Monsters or Earth Water is the best deck. If Zach gets distracted and can't edit this till next week, this has all been for nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> they'll just they'll just be like, "Wow, you guys spent a long time talking about something that already happened." Yeah, right. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but now, uh, speaking of things that have already happened, uh, <laughs> we also had the Earth Crystal Cup happen in Japan. Was that this past weekend? Yeah, it was. I believe. And we had Mono Water for Soya, which is uh, we haven't seen that in a while, so that's really interesting to see that come out. That's just so strange to me. That like, why do you, you, think it, why do you feel it's strange? Because you're not pulling Veritas. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> I think that like, so, there are a lot of answers to Veritas, and like, even something as simple as like Galdez. Like Galdez is a great card to play against Veritas. It doesn't. Not only does it trade, but you get like to to ex or discard a card from their hand or something like you could pull a monster back to like deal with what you had to sacrifice or whatever um depending on whose turn it is but i guess you're going to select before the second ability goes off anyway um anyway sorry judging judging questions in my head there um <laughs> but i think it, there are a lot of good answers to it but it doesn't change how good the card is like i mean like that's like saying sephiroth is a bad card because it can be veined and diabolist and uh and double dot of pings if you don't have duke yeah it could be there's a lot of ways to kill the sephiroth but it's still a good card like i think veritas right. can be countered and you should build your deck with him in mind um but you should build your deck with him in mind because he's so good as it as we're like there's an exception like like if your deck doesn't immediately have an answer to rain that's probably fine um like you there are other cards that are splash that deal with rain like diabolus plus cactar ping uh, Veritas himself, you know, there, there are a combination of cards that deal with rain. A great deal way to deal with rain is just Ishtola. Like, being able to sack it and counter the auto ability, you're... I don't know why people don't see that coming ever, but it happens all the time <laughs> when I'm testing or playing in a, in a local, and you just, like, they're like, attack with Ishtola, and you're like... Or you're like, attack with rain, you're like, sacrifice Ishtola, block with Veritas. Okay. <laughs> um, Shrug, profit. <laughs> whatever. So, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that that's... But I, I'm I haven't tested against it. I haven't seen Crystoria in a long time. Maybe the new one is pretty dope. It is. It's super good in the deck. And then I also think that like Veritas being around actually means that that deck could play something like Schrodinger. So like you have something to sack on the exit, but also something that's cool is you can ephemeral summon or summon to the top and then draw two. Um, I actually kind of like that quite a bit, especially if you don't have something to kill. So like you could play the ephemeral summoner. And then you don't need to set up like a fanfare on top that you have to hit. Otherwise, you're, you know, like you're just drawing it next turn. You could then just draw it to your hand and draw an additional card mm -hmm. as well as put a uh, a blue man. I want a character down. I want to say permanent. I heard. I, mean, I saw you almost like say you're <laughs> a blue permanent down. Um, I've been watching too much Magic the Gathering videos uh, this week. Um, so you can also put a blue character into the field, which is, I think, I think that's something that people it's should good for Leviathan for sure. I mean... Oh yeah, and it also counts for Leviathan. I actually forgot about that. So Cognato, and it's not even a yeah. yeah, it's not even a small count. Like Cognazzo, it counts for like half of something, right? Every time you play something, like for for Leviathan, everything counts for a full one k. Yeah, exactly. So that's like pretty good to have a short <laughs> anger in play. It's like pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the philosophy it's... corner was Sam Prime. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, seeing Fusoya. Um come back this weekend actually made me feel good because I played the rare Jill in my deck this weekend just in case we saw ya or anything like that appeared. How'd and that actually, work out for you? Uh, my round one opponent, I opened, I actually opened pretty poorly. I had to go turn one Edward and he discarded uh, Heroic Lulu. So I was like, oh, okay. This feels good that I'm playing the correct Jill. And then I drew it the following turn. Yeah, that's interesting. And then I hit multiple v VVs so back up the Lightning experts. Fire with Lulu H. It's pretty sweet. But now you have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> and he was the guy that listens to the podcast. Maybe he'll drop a comment down below. Yeah, send us your deck list. 
Yeah, make, Zach, make Zach's day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't promise I'll play it, but I'll promise I'll look at it for <laughs> an extended period of time. I promise you he'll play it. <laughs> I promise you he'll play it. Yeah, it was interesting. There was a Lulu, or a Lua, Rain was in the deck. Um, a lot of things that would get hit by Zalera, and I never drew Zalera. But how many did you play? Uh, I think two. Usually I play three, so I actually went down in Zalera. But yeah, I expected. I figured you'd say two, but I didn't know if you were on the three still or if that was. Still good like, enough to do. Yeah, the card still can be a huge blowout in some matchups. So, what do you guys think about the potential um, bans coming with Opus Nine? Zach, I'll start with you, I guess. If I had to guess, <laughs> uh, one of my first guesses would be Veritas, but we've discussed this before, and apparently there are opinions that it won't be banned because it's new. I don't know. That's if I my agree. opinion. I don't know if I agree with that, but <laughs> I I don't know if that makes it a sacred cow or not, but. Um, Probably like just Dataluma because everyone complains about it, and also I mean it is a pretty strangely I don't overpowered know if it, card. I don't know if it was <laughs> intended to interact like that, like where you shoot your own thing. If it was just like oh you know obviously we don't want to make it if we. Target I mean Cactar thing, but... came out in the same set. There it had to have been intended. Uh, yeah, I don't. Mm. Anyway, so Dataluma didn't I, I Semi feel like come out in the there. next set after that, or was it Opus Six? I don't remember. Semi was five, so it was okay. So and Dataluma then Semi... Cactor, I tried to make work with Pelinor, and it was horrible. And then the next set came out, and the deck was great because <laughs> we got Wall, Semi, uh, Star Sibyl, Cam, all that stuff. Yeah, great. I don't think it was that the reason you made the deck was bad. Like we also got Diabolus, which is like the cards the deck's best summon, right? Also that, and, yeah. And you stole. And they're still, yeah, yeah it, just, it literally just got, insane, when yeah. like when they're just like let's set this shit on fire, <laughs> like, <laughs> and not to mention Mion. Except Mion not too much fire because fire will bring well, it down. We, we didn't play Mion. We were bad back then. Remember? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. No Zidane Mion nonsense. But anyway, although I, I in, in reality I played Mion, but not in that deck. I, I, would, I, I Mion Viking was my jam. I would guess Dataluma. In terms of other cards, I actually don't know. Like I don't know what like people complain about Illua, but she, I don't think she's broken by any means. She, I know. There's a lot of ways to turn her off and to <laughs> kill her. You just block and a lot of ways to turn turn me off. off. Put a little <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> Unless it's in the damage zone. Uh, yeah. But uh, I mean, I like I said, that was the only one I can imagine. But what what are your guys' thoughts in terms of? I guess maybe there could be an argument for Valfor, but I also don't think that's necessary because it requires certain deck building restrictions. But I guess that's an argument for Dalluma too. I don't know. Someone else. So the the three the the four the four cards that should be banned in my opinion and and keep in mind that when I say they should be banned I'm not saying because they're broken I'm saying that for deck variety and for being able to just make better like Wait, different style decks that's what you're saying no uh, <laughs> yeah you can go ahead go ahead, guess Veritas Dataluma mm -hmm. Layla and I was gonna say Illua but actually I might Layla no that. that's no, no, but I think I can, that the, the two strongest cards in the game right now are between Zidane and Veritas, but I think it's a very close tie with Fina. Zidane? F Fina is nuts. Yeah. Three drops of Zidane is Oh, the broken. card's insane, but how is that bandworthy? I mean, the same way that, like, Domiturge was bandworthy. Like, it wasn't That's great by itself, but it's nuts. <laughs> no, it's not. Like... Yeah, it, it, it costs more. It's I mean, arguably you get so better than size, Thaumaturge. But... How is it not? It, it's better than Thaumaturge in my mind. Yeah. Like if. So that's why it's band worthy. Like I never got Thaumaturge band I mean, in the first place, but I mean. Neither did I, but I, I'm glad it happened. <laughs> Sorry, Cody. <laughs> that's but, okay. But you know, I think that like, well, the difference being that Thaumaturge is more broken than Zidane if you add in Gasper. Right. Zidane when you add in Mion, it's just nuts. I like, guess you get the card back, and you get... Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I think Fina, Veritas... Well, neither of those cards will be banned, because they're new. And I know that you disagree with that, but my point being that they're kind of flagships, they're legends. People... It's still a newer set. Uh, Square I guess... Enix still... And Hobby Jam Japan want us to invest in the set, even when Opus 9 comes out. I should rephrase to... I don't think you're wrong. I just disagree with that logic. I disagree that because a card's new and flagship, whatever, that it's not allowed to be banned. 
Oh, I, I, no, okay, I agree with that too. I agree but with what I you're saying. I agree that that would probably. But we are, we are talking about what they are or not going to ban, yeah. and they're not going to ban a card that's flagship. Yeah. Which is a reason why I don't think that they will ban, possibly. Uh, I don't even know, man. I don't know. I, I uh, hear they heard the cards that are are worthy of ban. That, that they could ban, that they will ban. Like, Fina is worthy, Veritas is worthy, but they're not going to ban those, period. The, the cards that are worthy that they could ban are Mion, Zidane, Dataluma. That's it. Now, I would make an argument for Diabolus, but... Kind of the fact... is the format, though, right? No, bit. no. It, it's more that they have a full art version coming out <clears throat> that's in a starter deck. They're not going to ban that. They're absolutely not going to bet it. Now, granted, starter decks aren't always necessarily the the where you want to go for if you're looking for your playable card, de- cards or decks. <laughs> since you know we had Chokomog in the last starter deck that literally did nothing. Um, <laughs> but that being said, they're you know they're not going to ban Diabolus because it's it's literally a full art. Like people like why why would Clark- I guess collectors might still want it, but why would people buy this if they're selling it for that reason? Mm-hmm. Like, and and the reason. So my highest theory, and this theory actually isn't coming from a Matt. This is after I've talked with Okimoto. Or this isn't in my own theory. It's, it's Okimoto's kind of. We've talked about it a while, and we kind of discussed on agreeing with Zidane being probably the card that's most busted and most likely to be banned. The reason that I still have Data Luma on this list is specifically because they mentioned that they were watching the card during the fanfare um they admitted that they were watching it and considered banning it but because or considered rotating it um ro- we considered a rotating a rotation but because they went with the bans they said well we won't need a rotation instead so we will watch cards one card in particular very obviously data yeah it time. said something about like that deals four thousand it was yeah, like they whatever said, they said they it was said very, something that made it very obvious yeah. that it was data Luma. so data luma is up for ban potential i maybe jfp is kind of setting the bar but the fact that he had three mion and three zidane in both of his decks along with three fena three diabolus i can get two fena actually in the first one but um uh, afterwards he would have switched to three i think that those are the two best cards to ban would be mion and zidane i don't think they'll ban both because you don't need to ban both and I think that they'll ban Zidane over Mion because Mion is a hell of a lot more fun. And you can do a lot of really cool <laughs> things. Like, like Mioning a Viking is a ton of fun. Just a for you. bundle of value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you, it's, it's more fun. Uh, Zidane's not a fun card. And, like, you could keep a, a hand with, like, Sid 2 plus Random Evoker or whatever. Like, a fine, a fine hand to keep. And your opponent Zidane's you. And, like... Well, you're not playing the same game anymore. And if they meown you, you're in a lot more trouble. And, you know, if, if you're doing the math on CP value, you could just play, like, your average play turn one is somewhere between one backup or two backups. Um, one backup costing you four CP, right? Um, a Zidane costs you four. A Zidane plus meown only costs you four CP. That is in itself just as good as just playing one backup, except you also got an attacker on the board for fear free and you took your opponent's backup from their hand. So like imagine starting with this water, this water backup deck, right? You have scholar, you have no, let's, let's say you're living in dream world. You have Yuna Waka, right? And then four relevant cards or three relevant cards, right? Your opponent goes turn one, take your scholar. Now you have Minwu, right? So you could Layla Viking. Let's say you have a perfect hand. But yeah, if you Waka, don't, or not, I mean, sorry, Waka. Yeah, yeah. All right. If you don't, if you don't overpay and play that Waka, they're going to Zidane you again next turn because they bounced it. And now they're going to take your Waka. So you have to overpay yeah, for that Waka. So no matter what, you're in a losing situation. Zidane and Mion are both up in my, in my opinion for that. That being said, again, Mion is the more fun card. Zidane is not fun. Like, Zidane is, is no different than being thought seized if thought seized could attack you. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Cody, what about you? Yeah, I think uh, the number one pick is definitely Zidane, uh, in my opinion. Obviously, being a. Usually, I play Mono Ice, so getting rid of Dataluma would be awesome. Um, but I think Zidane's just, <clears throat> like you said, it's just less fun to play against. <clears throat> yeah. And I think Sephiroth would be another consideration, but I think it's also a little bit too new to get rid of at this point. And, and, I think... and not doing well enough, right? 
Yeah, and maybe also since Ice already has two banned cards, maybe they'd want to sort of even the playing field out a little bit, ha, except for fire. <laughs> they, except for fire, fire they can just keep everything. They maybe. could just add Thaumaturge Gesper to fire. Maybe maybe we can get one card banned from each element, and then we can just have Thaumaturge back for fire. No, no, nothing for fire. They get nothing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> they get Cloud and Phoenix, and that's it. And Lease, but they can just keep those good and cards. Leaf. good. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when we used to think Saban yeah. was a good card? Whoa, whoa! I still like Saban. <laughs> well, you just like Final yeah. Fantasy VI. I won't. I won't like... play it in the tournament, but like, I right? Like you it. can like it. Doesn't mean you gotta play. I like Golbez. I'm not gonna play it. I love <laughs> Fasoya. Maybe I'll play it, but probably not. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll probably, I'd rather play Veritas. It's a white card. Yeah, you're gonna. Yeah. We know you're gonna play Veritas. Man, what's the world we live in? Man. <laughs> Or they you should can't... just take out light and dark cards from the game and let us have our fun. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess before we wrap up, let's make some uh, predictions for this weekend in Toronto. Uh, oh. Sam, we'll, we'll start with you. Who do you? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, I guess we'll start with who do you think is going to be in the rounding out the top four? Top four? Oh yeah. Um, those are the, those are the spots that matter. Unless you just want to play Madden, I guess. No, 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 I don't you know if, if, if I'm just trying to give you an actual answer, not just who I'd like to top for. It's it's really hard to say that Jordan uh, Dank won't top four. He has a tough competition, uh, in my opinion, tougher competition than he had last year. Um, so he would be my first choice for top four. Um, I haven't put enough prep into it. Not as much as I want to, not as much as I plan on putting into Kansas. Um so I think I could make top eight. That'd be sweet. Uh, I don't know about top four. We're going to try our best. Brian will make top four. He wants it. He needs it. He screwed up and played the wrong deck um, in the last LQ. I think that he will make top four um, because of how much he wants it. Again, that's part of why Jordan Jordan will... He's representing Canada. Um, he's a returning... It's his returning Crystal Cup. Um, he wants to be the first three time. He's no longer the only two time. So there's like, there's a lot going on here that, that these two have the biggest motives. I couldn't tell you the next two spots. Um, it would be cool to see one of our locals for sure. Chad with modifier. Uh, let's go. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> His modifier yeah. samurais. Ugh. <laughs> well, I know it. I know it. Chad's playing, but I don't And, and Hecaton Shantoto. The last I knew. <laughs> Did you remember that? Anyway. His, his opponent's like, his opponent's like, oh, he's looking through his breaks. He's like, oh, mono fire. Says out loud, goes what next turn? Chad goes pitch Hecaton Cherish and Toto. He has literally six Earth cards in his whole deck. I thought, I'm pretty sure. He's pretty oh, good. Oh man, yeah. Good so that, that I don't know, those are my predictions. If I had to predict decks, um, Wind Water, Earth Wind, Lightning Water, and Fire Ice, those are really non-conservative decks i'm leaving out mono water i don't know mono water could do well we saw it win in japan so i just i just don't see it top four okay and there's gonna be two earth winds uh wind water and then something with ice will be the top four who's piloting them no idea what do you put jordan on uh probably Me? some kind of oh. wind so, water type thing like that's all they talk about it, right? he placed a lot of ice too though or he did i guess he played when it was turbo but the way I heard his teammates talking when they were here, I don't think he's ever not playing Yuna Valvor. So, I know he's been focusing on poker a lot. So, what about you, Cody? Uh, I think Jonathan Gordon's gonna finally break into the top four. You notice nice. I said Water Lightning is one of my top four. Oh decks. yeah, yeah, I did. I was hoping you wouldn't say him. That way, I could at least <laughs> have, some, have some kind of different answer. <laughs> yep. Usually, I just repeat what you guys say. Uh, <laughs> but no, I feel like I, hasn't he topped? Made every top, top cut yeah. of all. top eight, I believe, of all of them. I feel like he's so he's got time, time to close it, time to bring it yeah. home. And I want him to get there with water lightning. I don't want him to like right. He you don't want him to audible like this is him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, I wanna, like, I... it's like you want Chris Adams to finally take a first place, but you want him to do it with fire ice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else is unacceptable. Uh, but yeah, I want to see. I'd be happy if he won it even. Um, but I think him and Jordan will both make their way into the top four. Obviously, I'm rooting for you to make top four. I don't really know everybody who's going, um, but I know Okimoto. He really wants to either top one of these or win them. Mostly win. Um, 
Well, he's he, already he, got his Nationals invite. Someone, someone you shouldn't, someone you he shouldn't, does. you you should watch out for for sure. Someone you should watch out for is Alejandro. Okay. Oh, absolutely. A- Alex was fired up, no pun intended, about his loss in Tampa. Me and him talked in depth about our top eight disappearance. We we made top eight and then we died. Don't get me wrong, we we're both happy, but we talked about it. That guy is fired up. And again, the reason I put Brian and Dane Cat is motivation. Like those guys are motivated to win. I w- I wouldn't be surprised to see Alex. Like he he is going and he is motivated. Keep that in mind. No, and he also didn't he come in second on the Octagon Open as well. He did. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait yeah. for the stream because there's gonna be a lot of names I know there, and I I get to kind of sit back for once and chill and just watch you guys play. Yeah, yeah I, ex- I expect a lot cleaner play this year uh, from the Toronto Crystal Cup. Last year was kind of a it's kind of a mess. Um, well, last year they also had like it was just the whole the whole term was a mess too, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was held at like an anime convention or something. And they had to and leave the hall like they're being rushed. It was like ninety degrees. Played their last round in Steak and Shake. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was rough. Um, we did that here locally. That's why I brought it up. Oh gosh. <laughs> we, we actually played. They played the top two at Steak and Shake. <laughs> I saw that. Fair enough. <laughs> was it by choice uh, or did they have to leave? Both. <laughs> I, I don't, it seems weird to say both, but that was the answer I got. I I asked that exact question, and my the answer I got was yes. Okay. <laughs> people people were hungry so, and nobody wanted to split. So. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't ever split locally anymore. So there hasn't been oh a split in months. We've played it out every night. So I thought I was going to get killed when I wanted that split on the box tournament, but You mean you didn't want the split? When I didn't want the split, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think that about wraps us up for this week, guys. Thanks again for listening. Uh we've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And, of course, don't forget to check out CosmoDVLease.com and use promo code Chuckle Bros to get 10% off your next order.